everyone, my name is Whitney and I'm a dental hygienist. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today, let's talk about how to understand your dental x-rays. I've already made a general dental terminology video explaining different jargon dental providers use when describing your teeth clinically. And after making that video, I've had lots of requests to make this video specifically explaining dental x-ray terminology. So let's jump right in. Here are some words to recognize when listening to your dental professionals talk about x-rays. Radiolucent or radiolucency. This means dark regarding the black and white contrast scale of an x-ray. So some structures will appear radiolucent or dark and that is 100% normal and how it should look. It is just a word we use to describe if a certain area is dark or light. An example of something that is 100% normal when it's radiolucent is the nerve of your tooth. Here is the nerve of a tooth and it is dark, aka radiolucent. Radiopaque, this means light or white in regards to the black and white contrast scale of an x-ray. Some structures will appear radiopaque, such as the enamel of a tooth. Again, 100% normal. That's what it should look like. When you see something even more radiopaque than the enamel on the crown of a tooth, it's usually an existing filling that's already present in your mouth. Sometimes when it's super, super radiopaque, then it's a silver filling that's already present in your mouth. Now, like I said, those were examples of things that are normally radiolucent or radiopaque in your mouth. But if your dentist or dental hygienist is talking about something that is abnormal, let's start with radiolucency, then it's most likely a cavity, also known as decay, or an infection, negative radiolucencies. Here's an example of a radiolucency of a super bombed out tooth. This tooth has so much decay, it might be able to be saved through a root canal, but but honestly, this one might need to be extracted. And here is an example of a radiolucency of a simple cavity that can be drilled and filled and brought back to health no problem. Here are the photos of the before and after pre-filling and post-filling. So I realized that on that last photo, sometimes it is difficult to see a cavity on an x-ray, especially if you are not a dental professional, right? You are not looking at dental x-rays every day like us. So to see the slight discrepancies and to properly diagnose a cavity is obviously why trained dental professionals go through all that schooling and are the ones to make that call. If you do look closely though, here, for example, sometimes a cavity can be present only in the enamel of a tooth, which is called incipient decay and maybe just maybe it will never cross the DEJ which is the junction between the dentin and the enamel this line right here is what separates the enamel which covers the crown of the tooth with the dentin the part of the tooth beneath the enamel a more inner layer of the tooth and the simple way to explain it is that when decay crosses that line you have to get a filling. Once decay is in the dentin, it's going to keep growing and growing and the only way to stop it is to drill it out and fill it. So that was kind of a tangent on how to know if your cavity needs a filling or not, but at least you can see what the dental pros are talking about when they are trying to determine whether or not they need to fill your cavity. Another negative radiolucency can be an infection. Here you can see at the tips of the roots there are black bubbles surrounding them. This is an infection or an abscess and this tooth will often need a root canal to save it. And not to make things more confusing, but something that is super normal and patients sometimes think it isn't, are the maxillary sinuses and the zygomatic process. On your upper teeth, you might see something like this and feel concerned, but do not. This is completely normal to see. Now, what about something that is radiopaque and negative? Cysts. Sometimes cysts show up as a white blob in your jaw. However, do not get stressed out because there are also several other normal things that resemble a cyst in your jaw, such as mandibular tori. Those are the bony projections on the floors of the mouth of a lot of people. If they are prominent in your mouth, they often show up on x-rays. And although they might slightly resemble a cyst, they are not anything to be worried about. So if you see something white and fluffy, while glancing at your x-ray, a lot of people have these tori, including me. I have mandibular tori. Other common things that can appear on dental x-rays are overlap. Overlap can happen because you're taking a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional object, right? Especially due to the curvature in the arch of your teeth. Sometimes that shows up as overlap, which has a radiopaque look just like this. Cone cuts. Sometimes this happens if the tube isn't angled properly with the tab you're biting on or if it has moved during the process. Crowns. Depending on the type of material the crown is made of, they can look subtle like this or dramatic like this or even like this. 
Root canals. After a tooth is root canal treated, it will appear more radiopaque than before. Here is a before and after photo of a root canal. Calculus, also known as tartar. If tartar is present below the gum line or even above the gum line, it can often appear whether it's very prominent or sometimes it's even subtle. But either way, this is something that needs to be removed during your cleaning, especially if you have bone loss. Speaking of bone loss, generally when the bone is not even showing up on your x-ray due to having a low amount of bone, they may need to take a different type of x-ray called a vertical x-ray, which will give a proper good image of your tooth and your bone. And of course, there's oodles of other things, right? But this video is just intended to give you a basic insight on what could be on a dental x-ray. You probably already know the importance of dental x-rays if you clicked on this video, but if not, I do have more videos about dental x-rays, which I will link in the bottom bar below. And of course, most of these videos explain the importance of dental x-rays in general. They not only detect diseases, lesions, and conditions, but they also provide great patient education, especially if you're able to understand them. So hopefully after watching this video, you have some background knowledge and you kind of know what you're looking at when you're looking at your dental x-rays. And if you're still confused, no worries, just ask your dentist or dental hygienist or dental assistant to explain it to you. They'll point things out for you and then you could be like, oh yeah, I remember that word. Like, it'll be good. Please like and subscribe if this video helped you. If you want more Teeth Talk, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com, where I have more articles and videos about healthy mouths and healthy teeth. Until next time, peace, love, and teeth.